Hello crafters, I'm Jan Bay and I'm an independent Stamping Up demonstrator. Today I'm going to show you how I made this star card. I was asked by a customer if I would show how it's done and I'm always very happy to do that so this is what this video is all about. I'm going to show you the different cards that I've made in my process to uh, come to this one. <coughs> um, I give a shout out to um, the Frugal Crafter for the instructions on this one. Um, her instructions were just so spot on, um, they were brilliant. So many thanks Lindsay for that, your video is great. Um, so I'm going to show you how I worked my way through to this particular design. First of all I started off um, with some thick designer series paper and this is um, a one of our retired ones from last year and it just opens up like this okay so let me just concentrate to close that okay so that was my first one and then I was thinking what happens if you make it with cardstock and then use designer series paper on top of that it works but I find that this is just too thick now to be able to open it and close it the way it's meant to. Um, I found it quite easy to work out the sizes for those triangles and that one there. I struggled with those and those I did on that side but I do know now how to work those out. Um, <clears throat> I liked it but as I say it's just too thick. I did find that if you decorate one of the triangles like this, that one's got to go down first. Okay, so you put that one down, the next one, and then the next one, and then you have to tuck that one underneath. But because it's cardstock, it really is very difficult. Um, so I dismissed that idea. I went back to thick cardstock again, another of our retired papers. And this time I decorated on here. I also added a piece in here so there was somewhere to write a uh, greeting. Um, now why didn't I really appreciate this one? Um, I think because I wasn't really happy with the... I think I got confused about how to do it up. Um, that had to go under there first. And bring that one down, tuck that under there. Oh that's right. And I thought that was a bit um, too much like hard work. And then I made this one. And this one, uh, Design Series Paper, is from our Magic and Myths, which I think was the Spring Summer Catalogue last year. Um, and I was happy. The reason I put the bow, you don't need that on there at all. But the reason I put it on there is because when I'd got that far, I thought that looked a bit plain it needed something else so I decided a bow was the answer okay so I've decorated the inside there as well okay so that one was good I like that so the final one this one I decorated the inside and I put another piece of in fact this one's been very vanilla but I put another piece of the white on the back here and that is what holds the ribbon in or at least that was the plan it doesn't because I put the very vanilla on there before I put the um, ribbon on so I had to cover the ribbon up with this which although that was a mistake it was a good mistake to make because had I put the ribbon and then the very vanilla you would have seen the bump very obviously but because that's designer series paper I don't know if you can actually see the bump where the ribbon is underneath. You can certainly see it in real life, but I think that would have looked worse if you could see it there. So I think I will, shall I put it under the very vanilla for this one? And then under there? I don't think it's gonna make it any, oh, it might make it less obvious. Yeah, I'll do that. Um, as long as I don't forget again. Right, so what happens is open up that then you open up this and I do some fussy cutting for the inside. Okay. 
and I think that is absolutely gorgeous. I'm just so pleased with this one now. Really happy to be sharing it with you. But as I say, you don't have to do this bit. This bit, you could stamp something in there if you wanted. You could leave it all plain. You don't have to do this bit at the back either. You could leave that all plain. Um, so you pick the elements that you like to do your card, okay? I'm going to do this one again. I'm going to try and remember to put the ribbon underneath the vanilla to see if that bump becomes less if it's under two pieces. I, as long as it doesn't come through that side, of course. Um, so it'd be one of those and one of those. That'd be the same, wouldn't it? Okay, we'll give it a try. Um, at least it will, if, if it doesn't work, at least you'd know that it doesn't work, so you're not wasting anything. But um, no, I'm really pleased with this exercise, so many thanks for requesting this, Carrie. Right, so, the card pieces you're going to need. Let's do that first. Um, I have worked out the metric sizes. Um, I haven't actually checked them though, all right? All I have done is I've gone by my in um, inches and converted them to the equivalent um, metric. I have made sure that when I have gone from 12 inches to 6 inches on the metrics it's gone from that size to half so I have been vigilant like that but I hope they are all correct. So let's get started. Oh before I get started um, a lot of you will know that I got married last Saturday um, and I don't want you to be distracted looking for my wedding ring because I don't have it at the moment. Um, I'm having two wedding rings and they are going to be made to fit around my engagement ring that I normally wear. Um, so I've got to wait. It could take up to six weeks before it's ready. Um, so I don't want you to be distracted trying to see if, what my wedding ring is like. It's not there. <laughs> um, I will show you once I've had it done. So I am going to use, this is the same design as this paper here, just different colours, um, but on this one this has been embossed. I don't know if you can see the shine on that. Yes you can. Okay and on this sheet the embossing is actually on the reverse side. This is a brilliant um, set of designer series paper and it's called Mosaic Mood. So this piece measures 12 inches by 10 and 3 eighths inches. So you will finish up cutting off a strip that wide. So hold on to that bit. And that is 30.5 centimeters by 60, 26. Sorry, let me start that again. 30.5 centimeters by 26.3 centimeters. You will also be needing, if you want a piece of uh, very vanilla on the inside and the outside. You need two pieces of very vanilla cardstock which measure five inches by five and three quarter inches, which is 12.6 by 14.5 centimeters. You will also need a scrap of very vanilla, which is for the sentiment there, and a scrap of crushed curry, which is for the um, scallop circle underneath. Okay, so that's all you need. This is amazingly easy to make. Trust me. <laughs> um, right, what do we do first? Now, I am going to start working from the plain side. This doesn't have any embossing on, and the reason I'm doing that is because I need to do pencil marks, and it's easier to do on the plain side and erase them. Uh, rather than trying to draw on this side. If, if the pencil goes over the embossed bits, it could leave an indentation there, which I really don't want. So I'm working from this side. Let me have an eraser ready. Now, I am also going to be using... Let me see how far down you can use. Yep, you can just about see. That there is my ruler on my grid paper, and I'm going to be using that... And I'm really, really, if you don't have um, 
this grid paper I really do recommend it um, I don't know how much it is I think it's about £10 a pad but you get a hundred sheets on one side it's inches and on the other side it's centimetres they really are absolutely brilliant especially when you're doing a job like this so this is my 12 inch side and I need a mark at six inches here so I'm going to line it up down here okay so that's my six inch mark and on these two pieces sorry the six inch mark is 15.25 centimeters okay so that was a 30.5 centimeter side and that is at 15.25 now with your two pieces of very vanilla which measure five inches by five and three quarter inches which is 12.6 by 14.5 you need the five and three quarter side which is that one which is the 14.5 and you need to do a pencil mark at two and seven eighths which is 7.25 centimeters I'm going to line that up again and two and seven eighths and two and seven eighths right now I'm going to bring my trimmer up onto my desk my um like a lot of you I really need some new blades for my trimmer um, so my cuts are a little bit on the furry side but I'll show you what I do to reduce that um, so I'm going to do these smaller pieces first because you can see the whole piece when I do the large piece you're not going to be able to see all of it in the screen so but at least by seeing this you know exactly what I'm doing so where I have my Oh, have you seen this? This is goes on the end of our take your pick. Now that we don't sell the um, paper piercer anymore, we use this. But this is a um, dye brush. How many times recently have I said I have forgotten to bring my dye brush over with me? Super, really pleased. Right, so what you're going to do, where you've got your 2 and 7 eighths mark there, you're going to line that into your cutting channel and the point into the cutting channel so you slice that bit off okay so can you see all of this yep so keep double checking that end and that end because as soon as you move one generally find that the other side moves okay so Hold that nice and tight and slice okay so save that it'll be useful for something in fact you could use that as your scrap for the um, sentiment now put this one in and well, you got your pencil mark down here I don't want to cut from there because my blade is really quite quite blunt rather than going up to a point there and pushing I'm going to lift this up and start it off on the paper come back and then go in sometimes if you just go straight up to it it will just um, crunch all your paper up Right, that's that one. Let's do the next one. Bring the blade down here. And then the same again. 
cutting track so that let's bring this back down here let's just start it off at the beginning there we go okay so I'll keep those scraps to be useful for something there's those two so now with this one okay so there's my pencil mark there and I've got to cut over to that corner there right so My, I can do this with my so my blade will move in the, the uh, embossing and the score tool is there as well right let's have a go oh that's alright so keep that as well and then that one and that one. You get one right and the other end pops out. <laughs> right, the bottom is okay. Top is okay. Bottom is okay. Right, now I'm going to cut this on the edge first. If you find like you've had it too high, that's what I mean. If you bring it up too high on here, the um, blade won't go there if you've got your embossing, um, your score tool there. There we go. That's all right. And where you do the, when I said about lifting up the blade to get it in there to cut first, sometimes it actually, oh there we go, I haven't done it too much, but it causes a little bit of a snag there. Okay, that's because I put it in there, came back to the bottom, then came all the way through. Right, so that's all we need this for. Now the cardstock here was particularly furry and I don't think I've ever tried this on such furry cardstock but I turn it over okay so the furry bits here and I do that I just flatten it all down and that normally makes it a lot lot better that's not too bad Where's my eraser on? Let's take that off. Take that off. Right, there's nothing else we need to do to the very vanilla pieces. Pretty good. Got a little snip there where I did the blade in the middle and then went back out and started again. But that will be fine, it will be hardly noticeable. Now, with this large triangle you have, you need your scoreboard, and in this instance, the scoreboard is definitely the easiest one to use. Well, it is for me because I know how to use it. In fact, I've forgotten a step there, haven't I? Let's go back. What you need to do is you need to mark at 6 inches or 15.25 centimetres on all three sides, OK? So I'm using my grid paper here. That's one. Like 
that's two. That's three. Let's just take that one out to the top there. I know that I'll forget about it. Right, now we need our scoreboard. Right, so what we need to do here is we need to score from that six inch mark down to that six inch mark. Okay, so from there to there. And then we need to do another score line here. So once you've got this in position and you've done your first score line, don't let it move because you're going to come over and do another one. Um, in fact, I'm not quite sure how you do it if you're using a trimmer. Let me show you how to do it with this first. I'll see if I can think of an easier way. Right, so what I'm going to do is on my line here that I've marked, I'm putting the first pencil mark in there and then my second pencil mark in there. Now, because we are going to be folding all of these three triangles over, we don't want the score lines to actually cross over with each other. Like, we don't want this one here to cross over with the one that's going to be coming over there. We want them to avoid each other. So the best advice I can give is when you line this up in your track here, make that pencil line against the outside. Whether I've got red there on this edge here of the red line and then do the same down here. Make sure that that pencil mark is on this side of the red line. If you do that, both your embossed uh, score lines are going to miss each other. So use a fat end on your uh, score tool and don't press too hard because we are using paper. Okay, now without letting that move, move along to the seven and three quarters line, come down and score again. Okay. If you're using your trimmer, what you need to do is line that in your cutting track and then make a note where that comes on the ruler on your trimmer. And then move this over this so it's one and three quarter inches further over that side. Does that make sense? Let me just give a quick demonstration of that. So if you're using your trimmer, you put your paper in, you line up your two marks in here, that one and that one. So that is lining up at five and a quarter inches. So you've got to get one and three quarter inches. So you've got to line that up at seven inches. So then move that up at seven inches there and then score again. Yes, that's right. Okay, so for those of you that are using a trimmer, that's what you need to do. Line this up at five and a quarter, score, then line it up at seven inches. Right, so we've done our first one. Turn it around so that it's going to score with that and that. Let me just get myself straight again. Okay, and again, I'm making sure my pencil mark is on the outside of this red line here, on the left hand side of the red line, left hand side of that red line, and I'm going to score. I'm not going to let this move. I'm going to go to seven and three quarter inches and score again. And then I'm going to turn a third time 
that pencil mark to the left hand side of the red it is in the channel but just to the left hand side of the red and this one as well when you move one end do go back and check the other because quite often they will move okay so there's that on that one and then seven and three quarters score on that one and that's all you need to do it as I say it really is so easy before I go on I'm going to use my eraser again move these obviously have a you can decide which way you want to go do you want that design as your star in the middle or do you want that one as your star in the middle I'm going to go for this one on the outside so that one needs to go backwards and this needs to come forward so when you fold this forward if you can see where your fold lines are in fact you, I would just give them a gentle little bend if you've got such a busy pattern as this I haven't had this as a problem so far with all the others I've done what you want to do is when you fold this over you want to make sure your point is In the center of your two score lines okay as I say I haven't had to do this at all with the other ones that I've used but then if I don't know because I did this to the yellow one so I don't know anyway so if you're using um, when you're using the sides that doesn't have the embossing on you can use your bone folder but when you fold this one back, because you eat onto the embossed side, I don't recommend that you put your bone folder over it. Then again, the next one, make sure that is in the middle of those two. And then you can use your bone folder. And then this one back, but just run your finger along it. And then this one should be the easiest of them all because you can really see the score lines properly now. And then crease that. Give it a go with your bone folder. Fold that over. And then we have our shape. Okay, is that easy? Very, very easy. In fact, I didn't and my sides down did I the, um, this is where the blade has been cutting on my trimmer so I'm only going over it gently because I'm going over the side with the emboss parts on but that's enough to fold that so to fold this up what you need to do is take one then the next one then the third one but the top part of the third one you need to tuck underneath the first one that you went down with. Now at this stage you may well need to give it another um, go with the bone folder and this is the only time I would go over these edges on here, the embossed sides. I know one of the things I wanted to say to you, I've forgotten about it. When I showed you this one, the reason I wanted to do one with gold is because I think that the gold will crack. If you're using anything that's foiled, I think the uh, foiling would, would actually crack. But having said that, mine hasn't. Maybe it will do eventually. But at the moment it's really as good as gold but 
just be aware that if, depending on which foil paper you use it may crack right now I am going to decorate this so first of all I have my two pieces that I want to go inside and one of the things I found on here is when you've got some kind of decoration like that, that should go down first and then you do the next one and then the next one but by doing that one first I got a butterfly on its side there which I didn't like so I do that one first then that one then that one and then type that one in under there I got that butterfly but he's up the right way okay little things like that when you're deciding which way round you're going to be having this um, I really can't see anything that there's going to be a problem there that butterfly's up the right way that's upside down so I want that covered so if I cover that that's going to be yeah that's fine okay so I'm going to go for now you've got to have a point up the top haven't you all right I'm going for the butterfly up there I know he's going to be up the right way so let's adhere this in first I'm going to be using Tombow I'm hoping. I haven't picked up the wrong one, have I? No. Oh, here we go. In to put that in upside down to keep it running. Okay, so I'm putting this down so that I can see the score lines equidistance from all around. That needs to come down a bit. let go <laughs> you just lift up your sides and you can see how whether you're doing well enough or not that looks good okay let's butterfly keep him up there now I want to do my ribbon so I've got to decide which ribbon I want to use I think I'm going to use crushed curry. Let's hold that down. This is a retired one, but it is a stamping up one. This is one of my favourites. I used to really love these ribbons. Um, so yeah, I'm going to use this. Let's see how much I need. I didn't measure any of the others. I just guessed it really. But what I'll do is I'll guess this and then I'll let you know how much it is. And you can see how close I was. Right. I'm normally over generous. I have wasted so much ribbon when I've been a bit on the tight side that I've given that up as a bad job. So that's 16. It's about 22 inches, okay. So if I'm going to have it like this, just close it up, okay, so my butterfly is my indicator, so all I did was I wrapped my ribbon around like that, as I say you don't need a ribbon on, it was only to make it look a little bit more finished, let's turn it the other way. If you don't want this to do this step, you can just leave it out. Oh, 
Oops, putting that too tight, aren't I? What I'm going to do, I know that that is right and that's right and it's only really to get this bit correct here. So what I'm going to do is first of all I'm going to put, oops not that, put my triangle over the top of that. Okay and then once I've done that I'm going to cut a strip that's going to fit across. That's assuming that it's going to be too obvious, um, Tombow, which I imagine it will be. Now I put some glue all over because I need it to stick all over the ribbon and that's going to go at the top so it must be coming across here I think come on Tombow please don't let me down triangles aren't the best shapes to try and hold right so this is much easier to see whether you've got the right position or not. Okay, so that can come undone now because it's in place. And I can undo this. I can give that a good rub. Now, is that showing? I don't think so. No. Nope. How much is it showing here? Actually, it's not showing at all. So why would it have showed on the other one? I don't know the answer to that. Answers on a postcard, please. Why would that have happened? I can't see it, so I'm not. I'm not going to do any more to this. I'm going to leave it blank. I might um, fussy cut a rose or something and put it up in the, just up in the corner or something. I don't know yet. Right. So to decorate the inside, I've done some fussy cutting. Now, what I would like to say to you about fussy cutting is, don't dismiss when you've got, say, a flower that's on the side like that, or like that, like these two. Because I was using one of the sheets the other day to make a card using the hummingbirds, another of the designs in this, with this one here. And I cut out some birds from the side, and I used it on the inside like this. And I think that looks good. So I haven't had to waste it, and I'm sure you know, you could be able to use the flowers like that. If you decorate the inside of your cards, it would look nice. Okay, so keep yourself a little bag and save all of those. In fact, that's what I might use on the other side. Right, to... Um, if you decided you wanted to put a band across here, I'm not doing it, but what I would do is I would take this piece, which is one of the triangles that came off, and I would lay that on there and I would mark with a pencil there and there and there and there and therefore I would know to cut there to there and then whatever height I wanted. Okay, so I'll do that just to show you. Um, did I bring my little... No, I didn't. Let me just... Let me show you. If you're anything like me, you're a visual learner. It's much easier when you see something actually done. So let me say we wanted this to be two inches wide. No, inch and a half wide, let's be sensible. 
Okay, so let's cut that. Okay, so if I wanted it for here, I would use that side obviously so it all blends in. I would flatten that with my bone folder because I can see the bits sticking up. That's better. So I would do that over the ribbon there, over the ribbon there. I'd use my pencil, draw a line there, there. There and there, and then I'll bring my trimmer back again, line those two bits up, and just slice them. Okay, so that one, um, am I in camera? Yep. Okay, so line that up and that up. And then the other side, uh, there, to there. Okay, so what I should finish up with a nice little band that will cover that up. Okay, there we go. So what I would do then is just put some Tombow on the back of that and adhere it on. Okay, so what would that look like if it was closed up? Like that. Alright, so you have the choice. Crikey, what a lot of options today. Right, let me... Now I have already done that. I thought I'd done the leaf somewhere as well. I did a butterfly. Yes, I did do a leaf. And I wanted two leaves. So what I do is I look at my strip and I would certainly cut these flowers out to see what I could use them with possibly even the butterfly as well because that would fit on the edge of a page but there aren't any leaves here that I can use I need to have the sides complete like that I can't it doesn't matter if I lose the bottoms there because I can tuck that under but I can't lose the side bits so that isn't any good um, where's this bit so here we go, look, that's a nice one, I could use that, that's a bit, far. oh look, I'm going to use this one, it's got the B on it, I like that. Right, now when you fussy cut any of these on here, it's really quite easy because there's a, a very vanilla edge almost all the way round and I just follow that. I mean I'm quite happy fussy cutting, but with this one there's no decisions to be made, you just follow. Let's cut that bit off. Some of the gaps I have on the edge of the leaves are wider than others, but that's okay. You can see that's sticking up as well. Right, so let me get my previous one back. Oh, like, got the V there. I wonder if I've got the same two leaves. be interesting, wouldn't it? So that one's going to go there. That one's going to go there. And my butterfly there. I think I prefer this pink one. Right, so... If you get your bits positioned where you want them, you need to put the leaves down first. Oh, 
So let's do this one with the B on it. I'm glad I haven't got too much gluing to do on this video. <laughs> right, now let's pop this down where it should be. And then the butterfly. Just tilt him a little bit like that. So that's fine. I'm leaving that. Let me see if I can put these on. Which way round do these go? Let me do that there. I could do that one there. And where did I see some other leaves? Um, oh, this was one, wasn't it? Let me have a leaf. There we go, that can go there, and could use that one, let's try that one. think so. You can go up a bit, you can come down a bit. All right, let's do you first. There's going to be hardly any waste on these sheets of Design a series paper for me because I'm going to be popping it up like this all over the place. I'm leaving enough gap here so that I can write my greetings. Right. Okay. You stay there. And the last one is here. Oh, you just got to do the stamping and the uh, die cut them to put on the front. Again, that's another option. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. Just like you don't have to do any of this. I think that looks rather nice. And the greeting at the back. 
There was one other thing that I was going to, that I tried to do, or at least thought about trying to do, but I didn't because I decided it wouldn't work. And that was to do something to make the stand, the card stand up, because obviously when it's done up, that is just not going to stand up anywhere. It's got a point there, so that's not going to be standing up. So I thought that maybe putting something on here as a support, but then you lose the gap where you're going to write a comment. Um, and if you did it so that it stood up that way, you'd also see the back of it showing through here. So I decided to give up on that idea. Right, so my sentiment that I'm using is you're the best and it's from Label Me Pretty. I'm stamping it on one of my offcuts using crushed curry ink. That's it. And I am going to use my layering dies, my layering circle dies to do a scalloped circle. So that's going to be that one. And then this one I am going to be using the smallest stitched shapes circle to die cut that one. All right. that over otherwise that will get caught as it goes through the machine I like how there's just a little edge showing through on these scallop dies rather than the big ugly looking things that I have seen previously. So where do I, this is coming on here. Oh, I didn't think it's going to cover my butterfly, isn't it? Oh, well done. Mind you, there's no reason why it can't come on one of these. That was not clever, was it? So, let me see where my bow is going to go. Okay, so that will be coming across here. What shall I do? Shall I say cheerio to the butterfly? I think so. Oh well, never mind. At least I've got a butterfly inside. Uh, 
I didn't plan that out very well at all, did I? Never mind, it's not the end of the world. I'm going to just finish off with some uh, pearls. Did I use last time? Yes, I used gold pearls last time. And I think I'm going to use gold again. And I've got some little... Oops, they're falling off. got some little yellow ones here. I think I'll use the yellow ones. Where's my... These were from the Artisan Share What You Love Pearls from the last annual catalogue, I believe. Um, put that in there. So there we go, that's today's project. So put that one down first, then that one, then that one, then tuck that in under there. Make sure it all flattens down nicely. Let's see if I can tie a decent bow. Because the first one certainly wasn't, was it? Come on. That's more like it. Yes. Yep, not bad at all. I can settle for that. Um, ribbon scissors. Now I do leave this quite long. So the recipient stands a chance of closing it up. There we go. So there we go, that's today's project. I'm really quite pleased with that. Do you like it? I hope you do. So there's that one and there's, I won't close it up, it saves me tying a bow in front of you again. Um, but at least you can see what it's like as well. So there we go, that's today's project. I hope you like it and I hope you give it a try. As you saw, it really is quite easy. Um, hopefully I've explained the, the bits to avoid and also why I have done the bits that I have done. But you can pick and choose the bits that you want um, and keep it as easy as you like it to be. So many thanks for joining me today. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the box below the video. I'm always very happy to help you. If you've enjoyed my video and would like to be notified each time I upload a new one, please click on the subscribe button, which is down there in the bottom right hand corner, and then click on the bell so that you get notifications. If you'd like to purchase any of the products I featured here today, the, they would all be in the box below the video. Um, there's a link to my 24 seven online stamping up shop. Also in the bottom, there will be all the measurements where you need to do score lines and all of that for you um, so if you've missed anything in the video if you don't want to watch it again then you'll find it all down there um, sorry the ribbon that I've used there is a retired one but this one on the um, green one isn't um, so I'll put the details of that one below um, so many thanks for joining me today until next time happy crafting Cheerio.